Do you consider yourself creative? So many people don't, and that's you. That's about to change after you listen to my conversation with Susan Park. She is an author and she is a coach. She is a mom and Bible study leader. And we have a great conversation about seeing ourselves as co-creators with God. So enjoy this conversation with Susan Park. Well, Susan Park, thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Bible Talk. It's great to have you. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited about our conversation. Yeah, I, I when, when we were introduced by a long time ago, previous guest, uh, Becky, she, you know, she said, you've got to meet Susan. And then we emailed back and forth and we we're looking at kind of exploring creativity and what is creativity? What does it mean to co-create with God? And we're going to dive into that. But uh, before we do, uh, give us a, a little bit of overview of, for those that, who may not have met you, uh, who is Susan Park? Give us a little bit of your overview and background and family and where you're calling in from and all those fun things. Sure. Yes. Yeah, so I am a Christian fiction writer. Um, I am working on my first novel um, about an Asian American uh, college girl. And so she is second generation, just like myself, who was born here in the States. And so I am in the final edits of that novel right now. And then in the next couple of months, we'll be pitching to agents and publishers. And I just feel like there needs to be more of a minority voice in the Christian fiction world. Mm. And I also do other writing about creativity, about um, just, you know, encouraging other Christian women um, in their different life stages. And so, yeah, so I do all different types of writings. So it's, it's and I feel like God is, yeah, definitely calling me to be a writer and to encourage others. And uh, where are you calling in from? I'm calling from Chicago. Chicago. Yes. Chicago. Yeah, I had a great, I always take my kids on on trips with me when I'm speaking in different places. And I got to take my youngest to uh, to Chicago and do the boat tour and yeah. pizza and all that and then more pizza. And then <laughs> it might be nice some more pizza. It's <laughs> not right. <laughs> all right. Well. Well, we're going we're gonna to dive into to creativity and, and what it means to co-create with God. So let, let's just dive right in. What, when you talk about, I know you're passionate about helping people co-create with God. And so what do you mean uh, by, by that, to co-create with God? Uh, you know, co-create, I feel like people, when they think of co-creating with God, they feel like it's this mystery, but it really isn't. It Co-creating with God is, it's an expression of your relationship with God, about, about abiding in God and uh, co-creating with God could be um, coming up with creative solutions, you know, for a business problem. It could be, how can I make the story better as a writer? How, what's for dinner? And it's a mom. <laughs> so co I feel like creativity needs to be, that de definition needs to be more broadened because it's not just for the artists or the, or the dancers or the photographers. It's everyone because we're made in the image of God who is the ultimate creator. For sure. For sure. Yeah. I, I think of uh, a, a friend of mine who was a Disney Imagineer for 10 years and year many 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 moons ago and he teaches creativity at companies now and he and he says everybody is creative you're either actively creative or you're not actively creative yeah, <laughs> like you're, right. you're, either, you're either expressing that so so i i know you you talk about how there are people in the bible that, that there are examples in the bible of of people co-creating with god or expressing mm -hmm. their creativity how, so Share that with us a, a little bit. Uh, where, where do you see the co-creating happening in scripture? Well, I think um, two examples that come to mind is in Genesis, right in the beginning, after God creates, you know, the world in seven days, he creates man and woman. And God, you know, told Adam and Eve, you know, please take care of the garden. And I think I think one of the first jobs as a gardener is a very creative job. Um, probably he's probably naming all the different plants, taking care of it. Um, that that's I feel like is a creative calling that God, you know, said to like the first man. 
And then another example, it's a beautiful example. It's in Exodus 35 is the building of the tabernacle. And so Moses had the people say, hey, whoever has the skills um, to make this beautiful tabernacle. And um, there is um, Bezalel. He is um, actually named um, in Exodus as someone who was really skilled, who was also filled with the spirit of God. So he wasn't just someone that was a craftsman, but he was also someone that was using his creativity creative skills to glorify God by building this beautiful tabernacle. So those are two examples that I see in the Bible where creativity is celebrated and it's used to glorify God. And that's actually, that's really encouraging to see. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so how would, how would somebody who, I'm going to play devil's advocate a little bit. Go ahead. So I'm, I'm not creative. I know creative people like my brother who can draw stuff or my sister who can sing or my cousin who's an actress or whatever it is. I'm not really creative. Um, I'm, I'm just a normal person. I'm a normal person. <laughs> so, so how, how would I even begin to see myself as creative and why is that? important. Yeah. Well, that, what I was saying earlier is that we're all in the, we're all in the made in the image of God. And so God is a creator and that ultimate, that also means that we are a creator too. And what I was saying earlier is that that definition of creativity needs to be broadened. So whoever this, you know, person's like, oh, I'm not, I'm not creative. And you know, I would ask them, well, what, you know, what do you do for your job? And they're, if they're like, oh, I just, I don't know, sweep floors. And, and I'm like, well, there's creativity in that. Like, do you find different strategies to sweep that floor? And are you sweeping that floor? You know, um, what are you thinking about? What are some thoughts that go through your head? That's also creativity too. And I know some people are like, oh, that's a stretch, Susan. That's not creativity, creativity. But I, I think creativity encompass our thoughts. It encompasses what we say, um, even how be, how we behave. And so again, it, that, that is an expression of our relationship with God. And so, um, I know I'm just using sweeping the floor as a very, just, um, just like a minor example, but I really believe it can be applied to every part of our lives from parenting to how we, um, cook dinner to how we change the papers because God treat us all unique. And, and we all tell a different story in the way we live our lives. So we all have room for creativity. And it's also asking God if that's something that you feel like you're not a creative person, like, God, please reveal that to me. How can I use my creativity in my life? Yeah, I, I, I mean, I love that so often as you're answering these questions, you keep coming back to this, this relational aspect. Yes. That this is our creativity is is both born out of and developed and utilized within this this relationship. And I think that even as you were using the example of sweeping the floors and people just kind of go, oh, okay, whatever. The uh, I'm reminded of I I believe that it's in Brother Lawrence's book, Practicing the Presence of God. I think where he yeah. talks where he talks about let me let me peel these potatoes to your glory. Right. Mm -hmm. A part of his job um, in the monastery was to, to wash and peel potatoes for dinner. And he wanted to, to experience the presence of God as he did that. And I, and so as you're talking about sweeping the, the floors, that, that that very act, the way that is, is, can have elements of creativity and can certainly be a relational time and can be, um, you know, uh, God glorifying in the way we, way we do that. How, so how have, how have you, um, either helped people or seen people work with people, um, to kind of not just see themselves as creative, but start to develop that creativity. How would you, the picture in my mind is of working out. How, how would somebody exercise their co-creativeness? <laughs> but just make up words. Yeah, I, yeah. Let's we'll make up words here. <laughs> I mean, if we're talking about creativity, then I'm allowed to make up words. Exactly. So, exactly. 
Yeah. So, we'll, we'll give each other that permission to do right, that. Right. Um, so, so how would people kind of in a practical way either live out cre co-creation, co-creativity, um, yes. or even start to develop that or work out that muscle? How, how would they do that? Well, I think, um, you know, I, earlier I talked about identity, right? That, and I, um, and I know I'm repeating this, but we are creative because God is the ultimate creator, creator, but we are also God's masterpiece. Cause it says in Ephesians that, you know, we are, we are God's artwork and he created us for a purpose. And so when we think about how we live our daily lives and how can we live our lives creatively, the first thing to do is to ask God, because again, I was talking about that, that expression of creativity is the expression of our relationship with God. So the first step is to ask God, like, you know, what are some ways that can be creative in my life? Um, and like, again, since we are broadening that de definition of creativity, it's not just drawing or the, these, what we think are traditional creative endeavors, mm -hmm. but how am I going to talk to this friend about a conflict? A lot of it is like creative problem solving, but I think it's that inten intentionality of asking God, how, how can I be more creative in my life? Can you reveal that to me? You know, and again, I just named like two examples in scripture, but there are other examples in scripture that, you know, talks about how people co-create with God. And it could be like different battle plans that, you know, like walking around Jericho. I mean, there's just so many right. different ways that creative ways are that God uses. And so I think we just need to do a paradigm shift of what we think creativity is. It's not just the arts, but it's how we live our life. It's the art of living, the art of living with our relationship with God. And I think that will only not only bring joy to your life, but a sense of purpose and a sense of fun. I think creativity right. is also fun. So I think just that first step of asking God, how can I be creative in my life? Can you show that to me? Are, are there, you know, I, I know that, you know, the, the way that you express your creativity, you know, you've got, you've got your blogging, you've got your writing, you've got your creative, are there, are there some other ways, wh what are the ways that you see yourself other than writing. So I think people would see writing fiction yes. as kind of a traditionally creative venue or outlet for creativity. Um, are, are there some other ways that you have come as you've thought more, had more conversations with people, kind of coach mm -hmm. people through that? Are, are, are there some, some fresh ways you've even seen yourself as a creative? Yes. Um, yes. I mean, the, the writing and all that, I mean, that's definitely a natural extension of my creativity, but I think for myself as a mom of three boys, <laughs> you know, um, especially during the pandemic, uh, you know, it could be as simple as like, okay, we've had chili for like three days. How can I creatively turn this chili into a sloppy Joe sandwich? Um, so even like fun, funny things like that to, um, you know, just being, you know, when I was like on women's ministry, like what are some creative ways we can engage the women? How can we have them talk more? I'm also a Bible study fellowship leader. Um, one of the things I, I was, you know, having a conversation with God, I'm like, how can I engage these young moms? And one of the things that I co-created with God is called the walkie talkie cafe. And so what that means is giving the women an option to walk and talk like at a park or at a mall or go to a cafe over coffee. And so I named it walkie talkie, walkie talkie cafe. So it's a way to spend time with these women. Cause I've got like 19 women in my group right. and I had to figure out a way to connect with them one-on-one. -on -one. So that's, that's just a recent example of creativity that I co-created with God that has nothing to do with my writing, right. but ultimately how to, you know, reach out to the people in our lives. So, 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 I'll, so let's look at, I, I think that there are some, sometimes when there can even be exercises that people can do or something, have you seen some things with either, either creative writing or drawing or music or 
brainstorming or whatever that if somebody wanted to even start developing that creative muscle that we all have, are there some of those uh, creative exercises that would fall maybe into the more traditional views of creativity that would help develop the creative muscle and mindset of somebody who is a businesswoman or a stay-at-home parent or whatever, that somebody that doesn't live their normal daily lives in a traditionally creative venue like writing or painting or musician or something like that. Are there some of those kind of traditionally creative um, exercises or whatever that you've seen people even even start to develop that mindset? Have you ever done any of that or? Oh, absolutely. And one uh, free and easy way to do that is to observe. And, you know, we are right now, right now our society, we are so stuck on our screen or on our phone that we're not looking around. And so one of the easiest things that you can do is, and I'll give an example, is if you go on a walk with your dog, for example, leave the phone, leave the earbuds, leave it at home and look around you. Look at the, look what the weather is like, what, you know, um, right now we're in Chicago, so it's fall. Just observe like what kind of colors the leaves are. Do you hear conversations that other neighbors are having? So using your senses, what do you see? What do you hear? When you're eating dinner, instead of being in front of an iPad, what does your food taste like? So I think one way to um, be creative is to, it's to observe. Because if you look, if you watch movies, a lot of, especially like the foreign films or the independent films, they really emphasis on the sound and the sights. You can't really taste anything, right? Because you're watching it but it's a bit tightened. And I think that's something that we need to practice in our own lives mm -hmm. because we are so distracted lately as a society with social media, with um, what's on our phone. Uh, and it, I think it's, it can really dull our senses. And so, so that is one way and it's free. <laughs> it's basically paying attention. I, I think that's what it comes down to, paying attention to what's around you and most importantly, paying attention to what, how God is speaking to you, which goes back to your relationship with God. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love that. There are, you know, there, are, there are times, I mean, truth be told, when I go for a walk, oftentimes that, that is the time when I can listen to an audio book or something like okay. that. But there, but there are times when I will intentionally kind of leave everything at home and just... Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, there's so many different little exercises you can do while walking. Yeah. Um, and I, whether it's count, I mean, just counting the different colors of houses you walk by. Yeah. I mean, little, little things that you don't even like notice you know, that just use yeah. a different part of your brain. Uh, that I think trigger other things and, and mm -hmm. allowing your mind to wander. I mean, I've heard people even even described that we get frustrated when we're praying and our mind wanders. Mm -hmm. And what if we intentionally went wherever God took our mind mm -hmm. and just invited him into each place that our mind wanders to? Yeah. See what he has to say, that that can be sometimes, I just, I, you know, I just love all those little unique ways that people yes. uh, do that. So, and, and I think we need to rest our minds. That's why people say, Oh, I got this great idea in the shower because your mind is a little bit more relaxed or right. people notice that they get ideas when they're running. So I feel like we need to give ourselves more opportunities to be in that kind of posture of not always looking at something and letting our minds, you know, especially as Christians, let God lead that. And I think it becomes an adventure and it's something that that's another way to co-create with God. And like you were saying earlier, just letting God lead. And I think that's something that um, is, I think that's needed more in our, in our culture right now. We're too distracted. Oh, yeah. Oh, I agree. I agree. I know there have been different seasons in my life where I'll say, okay, for this week or for this month, the first time I get in my car every day, I won't turn the radio on. Mm, so it might be that that's a five-minute drive. It might be it's a 30-minute drive. But 
the just say the first time that I get in my car, however long that drive is, it's silence and yes. just noticing. I think, you know, that there, there could be something, you know, something like that, or on my, you know, I have a commute. And so my commute home or when I'm going to pick the kids up at school and I'm sitting in the line, mm -hmm. pray, you know, pray for the people around me rather than looking at social media or whatever. So yeah, it definitely, it. exactly. It definitely takes discipline and intentionality, oh. you know, um, because listening to the eighties music is <laughs> things more fun than right. the person in front of us, but it does take discipline. It does take discipline and that's how we create a creative muscles. 80s music. Now you're now you're talking about, <laughs> now we're talking my love language here. I was going to the 70s, so <laughs> yeah, 80s and 90s music all the way. <laughs> That's great. That's great. All right. Well, this will be great. I I love to to end these conversations with just some completely unrelated rapid fire questions. Yes. So you're from Chicago, which means you probably have an opinion about is. The best Chicago pizza, Gino's East, or is it Lou Malnati's? So there Lou you go. Malnati's. Lou Malnati's. Hands down. <laughs> Hands down. There's no comparison. Oh. <laughs> and, I, and I'm guessing you have had that. I'm going to call it a conversation instead of an argument. I mean, I'm guessing <laughs> that comes for more than one time with a fellow Chicagoan. There's only one way conversation with Lou Malnati's. Oh. This one is with Lou Malnati's, yes. <laughs> Great. All right. So if there was another major city other than Chicago, if there was another major city that you would go to because of some famous food, like Chicago is known for their pizza. Yes. What's another city that you'd like? I'd love to go there and eat this. Or I, can you think of another? Yeah. Well, I'm Korean American, um, but I would go to Korea and eat harbi, which is like the marinated beef. Um, and they just grill it right in front of you. I mean, they have it, they have it in the States too, but they just grill the meat right in front of you and you eat, you eat it with some rice and different, um, side dishes. And actually I'm kind of craving that right now. I know, I was going to, I was going to say, I'm about, I'm about to go downstairs and have lunch as soon as I yeah, start okay. recording this. And I do not have to eat it. They're completely wrong. <laughs> okay. So getting away, getting away from food for a second. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we already know that you love eighties music, so we got, yes. we got that one. All right. If, uh, if you had complete day off, no responsibility, you could teleport and be anywhere. Where would you spend 24 hours with your husband and your three boys? And what would you guys be doing? Damn, that's a hard one. Because they have different interests than me. So it's basically me dragging them. But um, actually, which I have. Oh, but I, I mean, I love independent bookstores. I love cafes and good restaurants. So any city that has all three of those. Yeah, I'm not picky. I would drag my so, husband. And so if, if, if each of your boys picked the 24 hours, what would your boys choose? Oh my goodness. My oldest probably go somewhere where he play tennis all day. My second guy where he can growl. My third guy where he play uh, soccer. So, soccer. so somewhere outside. Yeah. So for my yeah. boys. Good. Good. All right, Susan. Well, uh, this has been great for people that want to connect with you. Uh, go into Susan. Remember the E. Yes. Susanepark.com and on all the things. Instagram, All Facebook, Pinterest. If I, if I remember correctly, you said you're most active on Instagram. Is that right? I'm most active on Instagram. Yes. No. So Susan Dean Park writes. So I, um, yeah, highly recommend you connect with Susan. And thank you so much for joining us here on Bible Talk. And below this video, you can find all the links to all of Susan's stuff and connect with her and I'm looking forward to reading that novel sometime. Oh, well, thank you, Chief. And thank you so much for having me. It's been such a pleasure. Thank you. For sure. All right, everybody, have a great one and we will see you on the next episode of Bible Talk. Bye-bye.